Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And for this lesson, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. We have three cotangent squared of... That looks weird. Oh, you know what? I forgot to write the argument. The argument is the actual... Like the value of the angle or the angle that we're trying to solve for us. Because right now, we have no variable. We're not... There's nothing to solve for up here. We got a three, a negative one, exponent two, cotangent, equal sign of zero. So, yeah, I was supposed to put the Greek letter theta right there. So let me write that. I got, uh, boom, all right. So three cotangent squared of theta minus one is equal to zero, all right? Now, now we got something to solve for. We can solve for theta, okay. Now, I'm trying to solve for theta, which means I'm trying to isolate theta on the left side of the equation with nothing else over there. Theta's already on the left side, but right now it's got some other things. It's got some friends over there. We got to get rid of those friends. This negative one has got to go. This three has got to go. This exponent two has got to go. And the cotangent has to go. Now, the way we get rid of these things is we do inverse operations. So first, I want to get rid of negative one. The way I get rid of negative one, I do the inverse of subtracting one, which is adding one plus one and plus one. Now keep in mind, in order to keep the equation balanced, if I add one on the left, I gotta also add one on the right. Don't forget that. So these ones cancel out, leaving me with three cotangent squared of theta is equal to one. All right, now the next thing I wanna get rid of, I wanna get rid of that three. This three right here. This three has got to go, I wanna get rid of that three. So three is being multiplied by the cotangent squared of theta so the inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm gonna to divide to get rid of the three. I'm gonna divide on the left-hand side, and I'm gonna divide on the right-hand side. Threes cancel out, leaving me with cotangent squared of theta is equal to one-third. All right, now I wanna get rid of the exponent. See, we see how we just getting rid of stuff, one thing at a time, one step at a time, right? I wanna get rid of the exponent. The inverse of squaring something or raising it to the second power is to take the square root of something. So I'm going to take the square root of, the, of both sides of the equation. So I got the square root of cotangent squared of theta is equal to, let me point, let me add something. Put a plus or minus sign right here after the equal sign. Put a plus or minus sign right here. All right? Before you put the square root of one third. Why do you put the plus or minus sign right there? Because if you don't put the plus or minus sign right there, then what we're saying is, incorrectly, that only the positive value of the square root is valid. When in fact, the negative value of the square root is valid also, because think about it. The square root of nine is three. Everybody know that, right? But also the square root of nine is negative three. Why? Because what's negative three times negative three? That's also equal to positive nine. So we got to take that into consideration. So we take that into consideration by indicating that the positive and the negative value is good, all right? So we use the plus or minus symbol to show that. Don't forget that. Now that works when you're taking the square root, right? Square root, okay? If you're taking the cube root, that doesn't apply, all right? Now, if I take the square root of cotangent squared, the square root symbol and the exponent two are gonna cancel each other out. So I'm left with just cotangent of theta. And then I got plus or minus. Now, over here, I got the square root of one-third. So the square root of one-third can also be thought of as the square root of one over the square root of three. Now, one is a perfect square. So the square root of one is just one. But three is not a perfect square. So that's going to stay in the radical sign. So I got this. Now, from here, it's a couple different directions I could go in. What I could do is I could convert this to one over tangent. 1 over tangent. Tangent is a more popular trig ratio, right? I can convert this to 1 over tangent, set it equal to this, right? And then in order to isolate tangent theta, right? Because this will become 1 over tangent theta. I could cross multiply. I could cross multiply. And then when I cross multiply, I would divide. Actually, no, because I would have tangent theta is equal to... Um, the square root of three, plus or minus the square root of three. So then I would take the inverse tangent in order to get the angles that I'm looking for, right? But I got another option. I got another option because I have, and this is what I recommend you do. I recommend you go online, right? And you uh, do a search for trigonometry ratio tables, right? 
the trigonometry ratio table. It's going to give you the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent of some popular angles, right? Popular angles like in, uh, in degree in degree form, zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60, 90, 180, 273, 60. Corresponding to that in radian, radian measurements, zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi, right? This is a good reference. I mean, this should be memorized eventually, right? I don't have them all memorized right now, unfortunately, but I got the reference. I got the reference, right? You should print this out and then keep this in your notebook, all right? Trigonometric, trigonometry table is what it's called, or trigonometric ratio table, all right? Because I can look right on here and I can say, I can find out from this table what angle has a cotangent of one over the square root of three. So I go to the cotangent row on here and I look for one over the square root of three. Now, this is not rationalized. On some of the tables that you might get, you might get it in rationalized form. Rationalized form means there's no radicals in the denominator. You would just multiply by root three over root three. In order to rationalize this, you'd end up with um, square root of three over three, if you rationalized it. So this table has values that are not rationalized necessarily. So I see one over the square root of three on this table right here, and it corresponds to pi over three, which is also 60 degrees, right? So that means that basically what we just did was this. I took the inverse cotangent right? Cotangent to the negative one. That's not an exponent though. That represents inverse in this context of cotangent theta. And I also am taking the inverse cotangent, yeah, the inverse cotangent of plus or minus one over root three. Now these cotangents cancel out, leaving me with just theta over here. See the cotangents cancel out. Now over here, this is saying what angle has a cotangent of one over root three. Now in the first quadrant, the angle is pi over three. All right, but that's not the only answer. That's not the only answer, right? I'm gonna tell you, this equation actually has four different answers, four different valid answers because, and here's something else I forgot to write down. We're looking for solutions that are in this interval from zero to two pi. I forgot to write that down. That means that we're looking for all the solutions in the entire unit circle, right? The entire unit circle, all right? So if you familiarize yourself with the unit circle, which if you're doing trigonometry, you should be familiar with it, right? Make sure you got a copy of the unit circle, print it out, tangible, that's you can hold in your hand and that's inside your notebook. Make sure you got that too, all right? This is your unit circle. So you look on your unit circle and you say, okay, well, where's pi over three at? Pi over three is right here, I found it. It's equivalent to 60 degrees. So because I'm looking for angles that have a cotangent that's positive one over root three, and at the same time, negative one over root three, right? I know pi over three is one of them, but I also know that any angle, and listen very carefully to this, any angle that has a reference angle of pi over three, or a, a reference angle of 60 degrees is also a solution to this equation. Now, if you're not familiar with what a reference angle is, I have some other videos that talk about reference angles. Or you can go to your textbook or talk to your teacher or talk to your professor about what is a reference angle and how do I use reference angles, all right? You need to understand reference angles in order to do this, all right? So we're looking for all the angles that have a reference angle of also pi over three. So pi over three is in the first quadrant of the unit circle. It's over here. Right, but then what if I go to the second quadrant? What if I go to the second quadrant? Right, if I go to the second quadrant, what angle has a unit has a reference angle of pi over three or 60 degrees? The reference angle, the angle in the second quadrant that has a reference angle of 60 is the 120 degree angle. Why? Because what's 120 plus 60? 120 plus 60 gives you the 180. 180 is the x axis, 180 degrees is the x axis, so 120 is good. 120 is an angle that you're looking for, right? But let's deal with it in radians. 120 in radians is 2 pi over 3. So that's another one of our solutions. 2 pi over 3. Then we go to the third quadrant. What angle has a reference angle of 60? 240. 240 degrees. 
240 because what's 240 minus 60? 240 minus 60, again, takes us back to the x-axis. Takes us back to 180, right? 240 minus 60 gives us 180, right? But what's 240 as a radian? 240 as a radian is 4 pi over 3. So now we got 4 pi over 3, all right? So we got 4 pi over 3. Then we go to the fourth quadrant. We go to the fourth quadrant, and we say, okay, well, what angle has a reference angle of 60? So that would be like 360 minus 60, which is 300. The 300 degree angle is in radian form, five pi over three. So these are all four solutions. One, two, three, four. So these are, what that means is, when I say these are all four solutions, what that means is these are the four angles in the unit circle, right? That have a cotangent value of 1 over the square root of 3 or negative 1 over the square root of 3. Pi over 3 has a pot has a cotangent value of positive 1 over the square root of 3. 2 pi over 3 has a cotangent value of negative 1 over the square root of 3. 4 pi over 3 in the third quadrant has a cotangent value of positive 1 over the square root of 3 again. And then 5 pi over 3 last but not least has a negative a cotangent value which is negative one over the square root of three. All right, these are all four solutions. Now we should check it. We should you should always check your work, right? I'm not gonna do the check for all four of these. I'll do the check for like the first one. I'll do the check for pi over three, and then I'll let you do the check for the other three values. But you should get into the habit of always checking your work. That way you don't gotta try to get validation from nobody else, not even your teacher. You can just figure it out yourself, right? So let's say we want to check to see if pi over three is valid. If pi over 3 is valid, then that means that 3 times the cotangent of pi over 3 squared minus 1 will equal 0. So let's see if that happens. So I'll write 3 times the cotangent squared of pi over 3. 3 times cotangent squared of pi over 3 minus 1 is equal to 0, right? So first off, what is the cotangent of pi over 3? Going right back to my chart with it. Cotangent of pi over 3 is 1 over the square root of 3. Right? So now I got 3 times cotangent squared of 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. So what I got 3 times cotangent squared times 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. Where did that come from? Because what is the... See, I wrote this wrong. I wrote that wrong. The cotangent of pi over three is this. So I don't need to write cotangent again. I messed up, my bad. But I do need the exponent. I do need that exponent. Because the cotangent of pi over three is this inside the parentheses. So I just need the three, I need the exponent, and the minus one and the equal sign and the zero. Now, what is one over the square root of three squared? One over square root of three squared is one and then square root of 3 squared is 3, so that's 1 third. So we got 3 times 1 third minus 1 equals 0. So 3 times 1 third is 1 minus 1 equals 0. And of course, 1 minus 1 is 0, which equals 0. So this is a true statement. So in mathematics, whether we're doing algebra, geometry, trigonometry, or anything higher, if you're, if you're left with a true statement, then it means that our solution is correct. Because in math, we're trying to find the truth. And we found a true statement. Zero does equal zero. Zero and zero are the same thing, right? Well, they have the same value. Just like one minus one has the same value of zero. So this is true. This is a true statement. So that means that the number that we substituted in is good, it's valid, because we want to use things that will give us the truth. We want values and numbers and angle measurements that will give us the truth. But that means that pi over 3 is good. So now, what happens is you should actually check each of these. 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. You should check each of these on your own. All right? Um, and just follow the same process I use right here. All right? So now, this is another example of a trigonometric equation that we just solved. You can follow these steps to solve um, other trigonometric equations. We're doing a lot of algebra here. The only part, the only trig part, really, is when you get to 
you know, having to know what the inverse of the cotangent is. Sometimes you might need to know what the inverse of the tangent or the sine or the cosine or the secant or the cosecant. You might need to know those things some, with some of these problems. But really, you're doing a lot of algebra here. So, th use this video as a guide. I've shown you how to do this. Now, go get some practice. Go get some practice so you can master these, and then it'll be easy. All right? I'll see you in the next video. Peace.